Hello everyone, and welcome to Interior Worlds, a liminal space photography exploration game in which we will be wandering these liminal environments and taking pictures. To what end, I have no idea, but according to the menu, there is an album here. So maybe there will actually... Ooh, look, bulk edit. And capacity zero of a thousand, so maybe there will actually be more than just like a token screenshot mechanic to the photography. I don't really know anything about this game, but a few of you have been asking me to play it, and I'm excited. I mean, that was part of the reason I like Infra so much, and don't worry, that's coming in the near future, is because, you know, when I do urbex in real life, my interest has always been largely from a photography perspective. And so, whenever games have some sort of feature like this, like Outlast and its documentation mechanics, I take interest. And instead of start, we have the option, explore. And no point talking about it, let's do it. Ooh, there's like chapters. Secrets found total, 0 of 25, secrets found here. Well, we'll never know until we get in. Once again, you found yourself on the move, unable to get any sleep. You're nestled deep in the routine of another nighttime drive for some relief. It's 3 a.m., and the immense absence of light envelops everything around you. Yet, despite the loneliness of this localized void, something is following you. Miles of barren, shocked road lay between you and whatever point you decide to turn back. But tonight feels different. You've never felt like turning back less than you do right now. Empty lots, blackened buildings, dimly lit hallways, they all lie awake along with you. With each one you pass along the way, the urge to pay them a visit grows stronger. Those spaces between the spaces, the connecting bridge between different worlds. The bridges that are themselves a world all their own, each leading nowhere. But do they really go nowhere? What do they want to show us? Something tells you the next fuel stop has an answer. Oh, that was a beautiful intro. I mean, I don't drive, but I've been going on walks in the middle of the night for years, and... You know, it, it's the same sort of thing. It's something you do when you can't seem to fall asleep, when you just want to experience aimless wandering, free from the stresses and noise and bright lights of the day. In those moments, it's almost like you're in your own world, but as you pass by all the buildings, you know, you look at the darkened windows or a, a TV glowing inside somewhere, and you realize that each of these things is important to someone's reality, that inside each of these is someone's world. That every place, even if it's all inactive right now, is every bit as complex as your own existence. And sometimes, you know, I do get the urge to explore. This is actually... That intro gives me, right off the bat, the belief that this game is doing something a little bit different with the liminal space concept, but definitely an angle worth exploring. Uh, can we interact with any of this? No. Uh, but remember, we are going to want to go off the beaten path a bit. There are secrets to find. Uh, warning, no service next hundred miles. Winter travel not advised, so we are off in the middle of nowhere. We're so used to backrooms imagery, but... Uh, this is a liminal space all its own. The neon glow of a gas station with darkened woods all around. 
a road less traveled to our back. <laughs> and suddenly we're blinded by the glow of the lights above, the reflections in the shiny tiles. On lunch break. At 3 a.m.? Well, it looks like your keys are on the table back there. Well, I guess we're gonna have to do some looting. Man, that is so... That is so weird. The character did say that they feel sort of drawn to this rest stop. Well, we can have a look around in the dark. A couple of vans piled up back here. And the door to the bathroom is locked. And there is a pickup right here, so somebody should be here. Alright, well I guess let's try going around the back. We, oddly enough, can't actually walk up on this curb, so we're fairly restricted in where we can and can't go. Oh, we can... We can examine certain objects and move them around. There's even, like, physics. Now this game is going for a sort of, like, pixelated, not quite faux PS1 style, but, you know, it's certainly got that retro aesthetic. No, or on, oh, that also says on lunch break. Well, we've got the key. I think the reason you go for a retro aesthetic in a game like this is because visuals like this take you back to a time where it, you, you just associate, I think, with a sense of drowsy comfort. All those nights when you'd be, you know, sitting in the glow of your CRT, legs crossed on your bed. Playing all those nostalgic games. It, it sort of puts you in that mindset, even while not being familiar itself. I've been critical of the use of this style in the past, but, you know, sometimes I do think it works. And, you know, we can actually pick up quite a few objects in the environment. Now the stall door is uh, completely off its hinges, and there's a green key back here. Well, where would we use that? Now, I've just realized I turned around, and for a brief moment as I was doing so, I really expected there to be something in the doorway. I don't know to what extent this will just be a, a surreal, dreamlike riverboat ride, or if there will actually be harsher horror elements to it. Okay, well, what do I do with this key, then? I don't believe I've seen any other locks. Can't get back in my car. Oh, wait. Can I perhaps use one of these payphones? Oh, I can jump. I couldn't really hear that voice all that well. It was pretty muffled. But it was basically just telling me my call couldn't be placed. Alright, so what am I looking for then? Oh, probably this. I'd forgotten about that in the two seconds since I was here. Here we are. Oh, uh, that's dark. That's real dark, but... I've got the exploration lust. Oh, look, these trees are actually obscuring my view even more than the darkness. Oh, what am I even doing back here? Those reflections in the glass actually startled me. You don't expect to see that in these graphics. Are we going to Grouchland? Perhaps no such luck. Hello? When you were a kid, 
exploring the local park, did you ever wonder what was beyond the tall bushes? I think this game aims to answer that question. <laughs> Every once in a while, the lights will flick out entirely, and it's as if this tunnel extends for... ever. Never mind, thank you for getting that for me. Well, we've nothing better to do. And we receive our camera. Looks like it's got a helpful flash unit, so darkness won't be an issue. So, what do we do with it? What's our goal? I can't see behind me anymore. So now there's truly no way out but through. Or... Maybe that's not the case. We've been given a gift and then deposited right back out. What is that light that's glowing through the bushes? It's as if it was never like that. Oh, but now... Ooh, now the gas station is totally dark. Lights out, no cars in the lot, but my own by the pump. And only this pump remains. The world we've come out to is not the one we entered, is it? I've been through a few tunnels in my time. I don't know of any that behave like this. Oh, is this supposed to be a parking garage? Oh, well, it sounds like the radio is still working and there are other cars here. But where is it that my character thinks they've arrived at? Well, sweet, I'd take a free camera. Although I would be worrying that it has some sort of curse on it, like it shows you the way you're going to die or something. Parking garage. Zero of nine. Oh, we can... Oh, look at that. Are we adjusting our aperture? Unfortunately, the pixelated style is not the best for seeing fine detail, but if we were to rack that... Uh, yeah, you can see the focus move along the edge of the car, just barely. You may not be able to after compression. Uh, let's have a look in the booth. I see they've closed the shutter behind us. We cannot seem to get in here. Oh, wait. There's actually stuff inside my car. Uh, Cano. Thank you for choosing the Cano Single Lens Reflex Camera. In order to get the most out of your camera, follow these instructions. To snap a photo, press left mouse button. Advance the film by pressing R between shots. Oh, we have to do it manually. I wonder if we can go for, like, double exposures. Toggle flash with F. Frame the subject more accurately by holding right mouse button for viewfinder. Adjust focus with the scroll wheel. Zoom in or out using Z or X. Uh, while in viewfinder mode, points of interest may appear nearby. Take photos of these locations so they'll be highlighted in the viewfinder. Once all photo ops have been captured, follow the brightly lit exit indicators. Oh. So we actually don't have to worry about missing anything because we can leave at our own leisure. Oh wait, but there's more. A tip, smoky anomalies may represent the more lucrative photo opportunities. Listen to the distinct heartbeat while... Something, maybe nearby? Smoky anomalies, that's... Hmm. 
That's a real spookadoozical musical you got there. Uh, can we see what's in the trunk? Ah, there's our flashlight. Obtain the optional flashlight. Well, that would be quite a thing to leave behind. Uh, but let's use our viewfinder and see what we've got. Okay, I don't see anything so far. So we'll just be in search mode. Oh, I hear it. Ah, there we are. So we've got to take a picture of this. Let's bring it into focus. Uh, probably want the flash for this one. And... Will be a good angle. Does it matter the angle? Flash. Was something just over there? I think it pulled my camera in that direction. Hello? Oh, this is all boarded up. But why? Oh wait, can we perhaps Ah, oh, we can actually we can actually see potential progression if we use the viewfinder. That's useful. You know, I almost was relieved at first because there were cars here, but seeing all this evidence of people but no people, if anything, makes it worse. Uh, I cannot even begin to read that sign. Look, it's all caved in. Oh, we can actually... Ooh, this could be useful. We can pick up the floodlight and move it with us. Oh, we can't seem to actually rotate it, so that's going to be the limitation of this device. Oh. Alright, I think this is where we leave you. Let's see what this is all about. I hear it again. Wait, is that the smoke? Hang on. Well, I got it, but it's it's so hard to tell when something is in focus with this pixelated style. This whole place just has, like, a deep rumble. And something that sounds like something between air moving through the pipes and a raspy breath just around the corner. Oh, I have no idea how this is going to record. Like, lots of, like, pixels and dots on a screen tends to be a, a very high, uh, a very high... Uh, storage recording and also very prone to compression. And this upstairs area is a lot bigger and a lot more empty. I'm not seeing any other cars. Maybe the viewfinder can help point us in the right direction? I think there might be something over there. I can see exit signs in the distance. And a lone shopping cart. Hang on, wait. Let's let's do this right. Let's compose it good, you know? Hang on. Oh, I guess, wait, maybe we have to be standing in the right spot? There we go. Alright, so we do have to capture things from the right angle, then. And is that something over there? It is, and it wants us to see this door. Oh, look at that! It's like... I don't know, it just seems like a little, like, cutout in the wall. Somehow the way the graffiti wraps around it makes it feel like it's... Oh, we can go 
go this way as well. Okay, but what about... I don't want to progress too much. I, I'm having a hard time finding a sense of direction here. Oh, this one has a padlock, so we're looking for a red key then. Oh, imagine if this game had actually come out on the PS1. I mean, it's creepy enough now, but back then, a game like this would be probably really niche. And so, you wouldn't really have any friends to talk to about it, and probably not many people talking about it online either, if you even had internet access at all. So, this is like the kind of idea that lost game creepypastas are made of. Okay, well, objective or no, we're definitely getting a picture of that. Uh, maybe we should do this without... Maybe we should do this without the flash, just because it might reflect back at us from the bars. Well, we've got a thousand shots in this roll, so we don't have to be too stingy with it. Oh my god! Ah, oh, guys, this isn't Voices of the Void. We don't need an alien jump scare. Alright, you. Come on. Do the do the eye glowy thing. There we go. Okay, point taken. Uh, so there are still secrets to be found beyond just the objectives. It's really weird how this game is, like, combining these types of visuals with some actually pretty advanced, like, physics and lighting. But I'm gonna have fun exploring. We still are no closer to finding our red key, though, so I think, uh, we've got to do what we always do in these types of games. And hug the outer walls. That's not just rust. The one car we find, and it's rusted and broken down. And those streaks on the back are dark red. It's now I'm wondering... It's now I'm realizing that the stairs leading up to here, the ramps, were completely destroyed. Yeah, sure. Let's just reach for this, why not? And a light just went out, and I swear I saw like a red flash or something over there, but let's not trouble ourselves with that. Okay, flash on. I don't... I don't like that. I don't like how it seems to be getting darker and darker the more I do. Uh, oh, look, this thing has been torn completely off. We got those uh, concrete-eaten termites around these parts. That's what we got. Well, I don't know what this button does, but we're going to push it nevertheless. Wait. Oh, did it... Activate something electrical over there. I can hear the beating of the heart. Oh, do you want a picture of the button itself? I guess in this way, there's like extra things for us to photograph, but it makes it so that we really can't leave without discovering everything we need to accidentally. We can duck behind here and find another key while we're at it. Wait, what does that say? There are so many games to play. 0, 5, 12, 85. Okay, somebody's leaving us messages. Is that... Is that this place playing with me? Or has somebody been here before me? Then again, it seems like a place like this would call to people like me. The kind of people who wander the streets at night and look for the spaces between. Well, I guess 
on occasion, things just line up to where we find them. Tell you what, if we do go through here... Yeah, no, we can't get through here. Although it does look like somebody at some point tried to run the barrier. And I guess they succeeded, ended up going under it, pushing it up as they went through. This is so weird. Like, there's their liminal spaces totally defying logic. And yet there's evidence of others. And it is so creepy how, like, the, the mirror seemingly stays down after you take the picture until you roll it back. So you're blind in the moment right after you take a picture. Makes me think I'm going to see something horrible in front of me as I lower the camera. And my mind is just racing trying to think what that something could be. It's actually making me real nervous. Open up. I hear that squeak of the door echo through this place. It's like a cave almost. A man-made cave. Or I say man-made. This game is actually, you know, it, it's very different from other liminal space games, where others feel like they sort of draw from all the same source material. This has the same ideas at its core, but the visual style and the way it's presenting it are actually quite different, which is really refreshing. You again. All right, well, we're catching you on candid camera, Busta. Yeah, yeah, you run. I'm sure there's a lot more secrets I'm missing, but the space is just so huge, it's hard to tell where I have and haven't been. You want me to photograph the exit itself from right here? But that's not all, there's still one more. Yep, I'm still missing more, so perhaps that will disappear once I found everything. Oh, I see, I was supposed to photograph the destruction here. Hmm. Now, maybe... Maybe we're not supposed to hear what our character's thoughts are on this. I mean, I was thinking, like, my character doesn't see anything weird about this, doesn't have anything to say, but... Look, it opens it up with a narration that I feel like a lot of people who would be into this stuff can relate to. And so, maybe it assumes an audience that is already going to be in the right headspace for this, and any details are best left up to interpretation. You're essentially playing as you. I just realized that that's sort of a face? I don't know, because it looks like eye, eye, eyebrows, nose, and a mouth. But then again, that could be some great creature sitting above a tall tower. All right, we don't have time for Rorschach tests. We gotta do some exploring. Metro. Oh, we're in a subway. <laughs> and these tiles and these types of graphics, I'm having flashbacks to Lost in Vivo. Oh, look at this place. You know, it. even though the game told me the drum beats when I'm near these mists, they just seem so appropriate as ambiance for this game. Well, let's get it done. And from now on, let's not just use our camera. Let's not just use it for those. Let's actually take our time and compose these shots, you know? I mean, I've got the photographic mindset. Why am I not taking photos? 
I imagine the lighting is likely going to be what we see is what we get. We don't have to worry about, like, aperture or shutter speed or anything like that. Hang on, let's see. How can we... The tools are basic, but I still really like the idea of, like, composing shots. I have had way too much fun with Red Dead 2's photo mode. This place feels the need to taunt me with the idea of a way out. Hmm. Maybe we could do a cool thing where, like, the gate is what's in focus? <laughs> I may be asking too much of these graphics. Ooh, but I have an idea. Some of you guys are going to be really into this, and some of you are going to be really annoyed by it. Hang on, wait. What's the best way to compose this? There we are. That way we catch the edge, we catch the highlights on the wall, but we can see the darkness and the depth receding back into that darkened tunnel. And I have no idea how that's going to come out because of the flash, so we'll take one more without. I promise I'm not going to do this all the time. There's something on the ground and another note. Corman. Thank you for purchasing the Corman Multi-Use Pocket Compass. In order to get the most out of your new tool, please follow this handy guide before beginning navigation. To equip or holster your compass, use the scroll wheel. Follow the direction of the compass needle to find the nearest photo anomaly. Oh, you're going to give us even further guidance. Maybe that means more convoluted maps? Once all necessary photo anomalies have been captured, the compass needle will point towards the exit. Interesting. So let's have a look at that now. Ooh. Who goes there? That's not just the gate opening, that's like something pushed its way out from our s side. Not just our side, though. All right, wait. I think we could... Could we duck under this gate? Oh, no, we'll never fit. Look at how far back that goes. Just a rounded, featureless hallway. Where eventually the lights overhead just stop. Never mind. I'm grateful to not be going that way. Less grateful that I am very much going this way. Oh, God, that's so dark. We can't even get back here. The game's not even going to let us. All right, let's try this then. Right now, I'm kind of begging for a... I'm kind of begging for a wider lens, and one with an aperture wider than, like, f1.7. But that should be somewhat nice. I annoy the crap out of all my exploring partners because, like, I will just take, like, ten different variations of a shot. And it slows things down so much, but I hate to leave without them. The droning of the ambient soundtrack almost sounds like low moans occasionally. Actually reminds me a lot of the ambiance and cry of fear. Oh, look at that. Now the question is, do I move forward or do I frame this in the, uh, in the hallway? I just scared myself with the turnstile I knew I was going through. Wow. Oh, yeah, no. Now we're widening up considerably. It's like we've left the terminal and now we're walking through the station itself. 
Oh, curse these, curse these low resolution eyes. I can't read the map. Two to six. I, I wish I remembered what that note said. The one in the parking garage, because it's probably important. Look at this. Ah, oh, there's like tarp or something, some kind of cloth strung up over the gates. But there's like a fog in the darkness beyond. Oh, we can even see through these things. The destruction continues even here. Not so much as a watch your step sign. Oh, that looks like a key. And a train. I wonder if that's not maybe our way out of here? Cannot tell you how hard it is to focus with these graphics being what they are. But we're not getting through here. We're gonna have to go up and around. You know, actually, the idea of an abandoned subway station is really interesting, isn't it? I mean, because unlike malls or other such places, you'll rarely see one of these places practically deserted. Like, even if it's in the middle of the night, in a, any city big enough to have one, there's always going to be somebody. Yep. 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 Well, you know what's cool is I have the mystical ability to pull up the file I'm currently recording. Hey, look at that. It's uh, 051285. So, 051285. What do you mean, denied? So maybe, hmm, maybe there was another one of these doors in that first level somewhere? All right, well, the answer will probably be on a note then, right? So we'll have to keep an eye out. Oh, it's weird. It's like I'm being compelled to take pictures of certain things. Okay, focus on the signs or focus on the, on the, well, other signs. Answer, we'll focus on the wet floor bucket and sign. There we are. Uh, I wonder, do we have any way to preview them? Uh, well, it tells us it, it tells us how many secrets we found. Oh, we can view photo album. All right, so I, I just want to get a feel for how the flash behaves. Ah, oh, that's kind of neat. Oh, and look, it's even got like the analog. It's even got the analog date stamp on the bottom right. Ah, thus making these actually feel like a log of liminal spaces. That is so cool. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll check those out later. We'll play more with this feature as we go. In the meantime, my biggest interest is that door. Oh, we are definitely getting a shot of this. Okay, so that enables us to get in here. But there's got to be more to this place. Yeah, our goal, I think, is definitely going to be to reach that train over there. A red fog coming out of the tunnels. Hello, 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 hello. Hang on. Well, I don't think we got anything for that, but... An object in motion, after all this time, is actually a very, very strange sight to see. Wee woo. One of the weirdest features of this is these like see-through pieces of fabric. They make it feel like, well, they make it feel like we're being haunted. Like there's a veil everywhere that we're being stared at through.
It's like the same feeling as a shower curtain, you know? No matter how unlikely it is, you will always, always feel like there's someone behind it. This door opens. Thanks, thanks for getting that. Might as well be a mine. Is there anything there? No, it doesn't seem so. That's cool. That's cool looking. Okay, we'll do one focused on the... We'll do one focused on the exit sign. And then one focused on the tunnel itself. Okay, and this is all serving the purpose of getting us down the platform and closer to the trains. Uh, we can go down that way for a photo op, but what about this? What did our... wait, did our mouse just catch on something? Oh no, I think it's just the water dripping from here and causing a splash. There is our exit, not the train itself. Well, that's still not going to stop me from trying to get close. Alright, wait, no, I'm gonna, hang on, I might cut this, but I'm gonna wait around and get the perfect rear shot of that train. Ooh, wait, this is actually pretty nice as well. There we are. And I'm actually, I'm curious right now, how did that come out? Nice. Okay, but enough, uh, enough messing around. Look at all these papers blowing in the breeze. Stand clear, service in progress, no boarding or departing the station. Well, I guess that's just the sign that we're not leaving by train. Can we try these payphones again? Well, so much for being able to hear that. Thanks, train. Yeah, it's the same error message every time, but it's so muffled that I think it's deliberately muffled. Oh, wait, is there, like, background compression when we zoom? There is. There actually is, so let's, uh... There we are. Oh, it should leave only one more. But again, we're not looking to we're not looking to leave that way. I still have that door back there. Can we get ourselves a soda? Oh, we actually can. Cool. Yep. <laughs> But we can only pick it up, it seems. Can't actually drink it. Up and over. Not that we needed to. Oh, well, we could take a picture of just this. No, no, we can't. Maybe it wants the picture from the other direction, looking at where we came from. I think the only thing that matters, really, is that the smoke cloud be in the shot. But look, there's still three secrets we haven't found, and there's the door. Next train arriving soon. <laughs> Heading anywhere. South Central Station, ten minutes. That was what we did, wasn't it? We took a train going anywhere. And no, I'm not alluding to a song, even though I did, by accident, directly quote it. OH MY GOD! OH MY- Alright, no, okay, 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 expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. I've been playing for what, like, nearly an hour now? 
Okay, stuff like that can happen. Ah, oh, that arrhythmia. Jeez, okay, well, we're not alone here. We didn't manage to snag a picture, but we are we are not alone here. We've, we've got to figure out how to open that door. Maybe that guy did it for us, who knows. Uh, maybe we're going into that guy's lair. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Yep, yep, there's something here. Uh, well, I guess all secrets are just aliens in this world. Uh, but look at you hiding in a dark corner. We've really got to explore every crevice. Alright, you... Get out of here, bucko. Uh, that sound almost like a gunshot whenever, whenever we take a picture of a secret. Oh, there's something here as well. Yep, I knew it. It's it's all these little corners, you know, the kind of thing you wouldn't even think about. That's where you've got to find them. There's two. Third might actually be the door itself. No, they're still not letting us through. So then I... Oh, no, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. We can get through now that we've discovered everything we needed to discover. Unless I just totally missed this door earlier. Oh wow, what a creepy sight. But these these handles sure do make excellent foreground objects, don't they? Hang on. There we are. Get out of my way, you boards. Out of my way. And we'll save these so that we can still jump up and backtrack if need be, which, yes, need be, because that's where the door is, unless... Uh, perhaps we can... Ah, from here, we can push this out of the way. All right. I, I can tell that this is exploration that they've thought about. You know, they don't want it to be, like, all... Tedious. That looks very likely like blood. And it's also what we call a common thread. One of these was in the parking garage as well. Maybe I'll get something for taking a picture of it. No such luck. All right, well, let's keep looking. Uh, over there, those pallets are stacked. Maybe we can climb on board there. We could go upstairs and leave the level from here. Or potentially not. It seems like they really don't want us to. But let's have a look over here. There's got to be a way to get... Yep, up and into... And there you are, sir. A. La. Mao. Alright, let's at least see what's beyond us, in case maybe something is over here towards the end. Just clamber on up over the rubble. But no, we're not ready to go that way yet. And apparently neither was the person who got dragged through here. Okay guys, see, when I get stuck in a game, I find that the best way to move forward is to try and Google things in such a way where you learn how to find the solution rather than just searching for the solution itself. And I tried to do that here, and it seems like what I discovered is that the codes that we discover do not necessarily get used in the same level, or even the next level. We may actually have to backtrack to see what some of these things are. I assume that, uh, so the one before was the games, or so many games we can play. So we'll keep that in mind for whatever we might encounter next. I wonder if there's a way we can actually photograph the notes themselves so that we can go back for the reference. But for now, we have completed the Metro. And this is really, really cool, I gotta say.
airport. Uh, the metro's wealthier, more posh, and yet uh, still very much liminal cousin. Oh, that was disorienting. That was real disorienting watching that display move to the right, but the ground thing, what do you call these? Moving to the left. It's weird. It's like, it's almost like we're being presented with something better while we know full well that it's no different from before. Hang on, let's, uh, yep. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's get that centered and... Boop. I can hear that, but we do have a map as well. Can't read any of it, which uh, I'm starting to think that's all part of like the dreamlike tone. The fact that there's words, but we can't read them. That there's voices on the phones, but we can't understand them. Okay, well, obviously I'm going up the down escalator. Hmm, lots of gates down here as well. <laughs> if anything, this more reminds me of like a library once we had the counters and carpeted floors to the mix. Now that's a nice spot for some depth of field. Ooh, wait, there's a TV over there. And that looks to me like it may possibly be a green light of interactivity. It is! Well, I was hoping for some sort of you know, companionship noise, much like a lot of you are using this video for. But it seems like I haven't been rewarded in such a way. Oh, look, we can actually pick up. There's, like, luggage all left behind. I I'm wondering if we're going to get some sort of answers as to what's actually happening to us. Or if we've already been given our answers, if that sort of, if that sort of depressed, lonely poetry that we got in the beginning isn't actually the literal interpretation of what's happening here. New arrivals, six o'clock, now boarding, baggage claim closed. There's our salvation, the metal detectors and the doors. And if we look closely, hang on. Oh no, I was going to say skylights, but we cannot see anything beyond. Hang on. Okay, so our zoom is reset. This waiting area disturbingly falls off into darkness. I wonder if there won't maybe be some reason to turn on all these TVs. Alright, but of course I gotta have a look at this. Hmm, what's the best way to compose this? That looks alright-ish. And hey, it counts! I guess it's not telling us to take pictures of specific things, more just the area in general, and it has to contain that smoke. Oh, we can actually pick it up. I wanted to see if we could sit in it, or maybe even spin it around. Is there any reason for us to go all the way down to the end? No, and in fact, we could have entered here. I don't believe I knocked this one over. That's the thing about some of these liminal spaces, is that uh, many of them have no objects in them. Some of them have some objects in them. 
but they're usually placed like as expected. And so when there's something toppled over, like a chair or something, it, it gives you the impression that you just missed someone. We're getting into the back areas. Okay, you're moving autonomously. For a second, I wasn't sure if you weren't perhaps gonna actually follow me. Suggesting that in this lonely, otherworldly place, someone is sitting in a room watching me. Of course, nothing we've seen precludes that possibility. How are we going to go about this? Yeah, when you zoom in, it definitely makes the focus appear sharper. Nothing back here. And that down there... I was going to say, looks like a key on the other side of a locked gate. But look at this on the ground. It's like someone tried to activate this thing and got burned or something. That's the front area. Oh, I hate that. The way it also, like, it almost expands the flicker because we can see the reflection on the wet floor. But it's the kind of thing that makes me think that in, in one of those brief flickers, we'll see a, a long, dark, bony hand move around the corner. Look at the placement of this luggage. This one right at the start of the, of the scanning process. It's literally like everyone disappeared in the middle of a workday. It's not even like, uh, it's not even like it's closed down. Why did you have to make such a horrifying sound? That's like a shriek. No getting through here. Employees only. I'm basically an employee at this point. So many flickering lights, so many dark hallways, so many closed shutters, so many shutters that someone's clearly been dragged through. Look at this. This game, like, you remove those pixelated graphics, and this is already, like, quite a pretty game. These reflections really do go a long way. Hang on, wait, which, what would be the best angle for this? No, definitely this way. But we cannot enter. It's almost like this place wants to bring me on a tour of it. I... I heard it coming and I was looking around to see... I didn't expect it to drop down the stairs like that. I thought it was coming from my right. This thing has a real interest in me getting pictures of hallways. You know what? It actually sort of reminds me of, like, Anatomy by Kitty Horror Show. I played that game a while back, and there was also a more recent Kane Pixels video, which I've recently started to get into, and it, it sort of goes into the idea of places being angry at being abandoned. I don't know if that's what's happening here, but it, it really is almost like a look-at-me mentality that this place is going for. 
for some reason, these tall, angled ceilings are like really freaking me out. There are skylights, but it's nothing but starless blackness outside. Terminal 1. Oh, there is actually an aircraft out there. Although it sits on an endless ocean of darkness. Well, we can attempt to board. This game loves its hallway shots. Wait, let's really, really Kubrick this thing. Put it just slightly out of focus. I think that's the way you go for this one. But we cannot board. This is so weird. This whole place empty. And yet the lights are on and we can hear the jet engines outside. This whole... I really love this photography feature, and even though I don't think it actually meshes particularly well with the graphical overlay, I still think it's really, really cool, and I kind of wish more games would do something like this. I mean, a, a lot of games these days do have a photo mode, but actually integrating it in this way is just really interesting. Ooh, this one is a lot narrower. Let's get one looking outward this time. No, no. It's actually better if we don't get a closure from an exit. Oh, that actually, it didn't count. Alright, close enough. Hang on. Yeah, 6 o'clock now boarding. Uh, 2340, flight boarding now. TSA pre-check closed. 4-hour layover. So it, it's all sensical. It's not hiding any spooky messages for me, but look. This, like, black ashy, like, sooty substance. This stuff is absolutely everywhere, but here, it's like caked all along the bottom of the windows. All of it almost looks like there was like a localized fire, and yet the rest of the place is totally pristine. We're not getting through there. That's actually, that's a black or a white key. And we never did get our hands on the red one. Look, these belts are still in motion. Everywhere we've seen so far has been a place of, like, almost drowsiness of transitions not only from one area to the next, but of transitions from one state of consciousness to the next. I mean, an airport, waiting area, a, a, a metro station, a parking garage. These are all places where you visit when you're on the move, when you're going to work, when you're traveling between cities. And usually they're the moments where you take a moment to rest, when you just put your head in your hands because you know you're going to be waiting for a little while. And in those moments, you're just not mentally all there. Actually, those are the times when you start to doze off and, and wonder what you'll wake up to. I feel like everybody has had that thought, you know? Like, what if I fall asleep in the back of the bus? What if I wake up and there's just nobody here and my train is long gone? And obviously, I'm going to walk down the up escalator. A 
I'm hearing very faint music. And there's a weird red glow coming from back there. Hang on. Okay, well, it looks like the store has been vacated except for a few bottles of alcohol in the back. I don't know if that helps my situation, but it probably doesn't make it worse, so maybe there's some way we can get in here? Uh, and because people always inevitably point it out, uh, when I say Muzak, I'm not pronouncing music that way, it's a thing. It's basically, it's basically the brand of, like, mall and elevator music. Money, money everywhere, and not a dollar to spend. Oh, well, I guess literally not a dollar to spend because it all phased through the tiles. Do you hate it when that happens? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Here's an idea. Uh, I can't quite get it, but I was going to say it would be kind of cool to have, like, this image, right? But only the exit sign in the reflection is in focus. All right, so that red key is how we're getting out of here, which means it's probably the last thing we're gonna encounter. And there's just something so creepy about a more or less well-lit area that just falls off into darkness, don't you think? Let's get that. Ooh, a gumball machine. Can I get some gumballs? Yep. Well, I mean, I was going to say I don't want it now, but is anybody really walking on these floors? If I get sick, that might actually be proof that there are others here. So you see, it's actually survivally relevant that I test each of these gumballs. Another screen. Okay, we're going to be paying much closer attention to whatever this opens. That's the store. <laughs> I, I kept looking for a little while longer because I didn't know if maybe there'd be something else it wanted to add. Yeah, there's something crawling about. No matter which never way you look at it, there is something crawling about. That's like one of the only consistent things between all of these areas. There you are. I don't like how you turn to face me. So you get out of here. Is that clackering, clattering sound supposed to be you skedaddling? Uh, sure, some of the sounds I made were words. Oh, we can actually push this aside and completely brutalize the remaining stocks. The only goods left in the world. And we pushed them over. Was that just the door? Did I hear, like, footsteps echoing on the ground? I'll tell you what's supernatural is the abilities of the janitor to keep these floors spotless. This is concrete. The texture shouldn't even allow this. I also do wonder if I don't maybe get something for, like, activating all these things. But there we are. Can't open this. But down this hallway here... What happened to you? Oh no, I just had a horrifying thought. Imagine being sent to the back rooms, but you're physically disabled. Imagine ending up here if you're blind, or 
Well, I suppose it wouldn't matter too much if you're deaf. There's... I, I really feel like we need uh, more disabled protagonists in horror. Not only because of, like, representation, but because I feel like it has unique opportunities to present that horror. And we can remove that. There's our shortcut. And how many of you little guys are we looking for? There's still another one. We can even drink at the water fountains. And the kitty one. Well, we didn't really check the right side of the of the boarding area. So maybe we have a look around here, look at that. And here's our last thing, but like I would absolutely adore this situation in real life. The idea of just like sitting over here in the dark and then just a whole lane of light between you and even more dark beyond. It's like overlapping layers of safety bubble almost. Let's try that again, but this time with you. And let's try and get the distance stuff in focus. There we are. Now we have everything we need to leave, but there's still one more A and one more key. Well, we can open this gate. But I don't see that there's going to be any more beyond here. And so our search continues. The fact that we haven't found one of these aliens means that there's places we haven't looked. And if there's places we haven't looked, that means, well, there's more to find. I, I hope that they're not going to do the insane jerk maneuver and have the key be on one of these, like, carousels or something. Or just in a random seat. Oh, oh, you were slightly ajar. Okay, there are some doors we can open then, and look. I can't read any of that. In fact, my flashlight doesn't seem to interact with it. But besides the key, there is some stuff on a cork board. Wonder if that's important. But alright, we should now be able to head over to Terminal 4 and see what's behind it. We still haven't found that alien. Hopefully, well, hopefully that's what's behind the door. Okay, the groan of that door combined with you just sitting there being all different. Not something I particularly appreciated. Good. Bye. <laughs> You know, no matter how many times I take pictures of these things, that sudden crash makes me feel like in the blind after the shutter clamps down, you're moving around and coming to bite my ankles. Let's get out of here. What an abrupt transition. Okay, I'm calling it. Next thing's gonna be a hotel. Right? Like, it's it's not exactly like it, but if that's, like, carpet with those patterns... Maybe we're gonna have, like, some inspiration from something like The Shining. Called it. Oh, wow. <laughs> For a second I thought that maybe there was, like, gonna be morning or sunset light pouring through the windows, but nope. Still night. Just a street lamp over a single car. Somebody got here before us, but who knows where in this labyrinth place they may be. But looking at my record time, I think that'll have to wait. Until next time. This is really, really cool. Like, I'm enjoying this so much. And it, I love that it gives us the freedom to use the camera to take pictures of other things in the environment. And we can actually go back and look at them. 
it, it may be a small thing. It may not have too much impact on the gameplay beyond just like, you know, saying, okay, I've been everywhere and we can move on now. I'm really digging this exploration, and it's doing it in such a way where it's not that there's a million things to find. It scatters secrets around in such a way where you're motivated to walk around, but really, the main event is the environments themselves, and more importantly, the vibe. This game, more than other Liminal Space games, is all about the vibe, not just of the horror of the loneliness and these nonsensical places. Well, actually, unlike other Liminal Space games, the architecture itself isn't even abnormal. These places are more or less just empty, but otherwise present the way you would find them in your waking life. In your waking life, as you, as you wander them, imagining what it would be like if you were all alone. And that's really the key difference in this game's feeling. It's really more that depressive dreamlike state that it emphasizes above all else, even more so than the creepiness. I can't wait to see how this game deals with some of these ideas and and just where it's all going with this. But until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.